This is Jason Valtler. You're watching Submissions 101. No problem, you are. Yeah, no problem, man. And uh, so we want to know what Jason Von Flew has been doing since his stint on the Ultimate Fighter 2. Um, what have I been up to since Ultimate Fighter 2? UFC, Strike Force, Pure Combat, just bouncing around, you know, having fun, training, living life on my terms. Yeah, where are you currently training? Um, right now, I decided to move back to Fresno for of the year, my home, I'm um, from Kermit, California, just outside of Fresno, Yeah. and I decided to go back here to uh, spend time with my girlfriend while she finishes up uh, Fresno State, graduates within the year, so I am currently training at um, Boys Gracie for Jiu-Jitsu of Fresno, a oh. couple of nights a week, Yep. and, and that's owned by uh, Tosh Cook, and then I'm over at uh, Fresno Kickboxing Academy. Yeah, Gabe and Angel are the guys that own uh, the Kickbox Academy, so I'm doing a lot of striking and uh, and um, cardio work over there. A couple guys wanted to know what age you were introduced to martial arts and why you decided to pursue the fighting career. Uh, well, um, I had taken a job transfer with uh, was was then Rainbow Brad Erkren, and ended up over in San Luis Obispo. So I moved over there to work at a bread company, at Depot, and uh, I've always been interested in martial arts growing up. The problem is, was, you know, I brought up in the welfare system, and so when you're on the welfare, you can't afford the martial arts. <laughs> right. So, you know, that's a high school and such, and did really well. So when I got over to Slump, I, um, one night I popped into a bar, and there's this Mohawk freak behind the bar bartending, you know, and I'm... 20 years old, 20, no, 21, 22 years old, and of course, I think it's a whoop them because I'm a high school wrestler. Yeah. And then to find out, that's Chuck Liddell. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, yet there's a fly-off for slow kickboxing on the wall. Everybody directed me to the Mohawk Freak, so I talked to him for a couple minutes. He said, yeah, it's my school, come by, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's a face you know, he'd heard every night since he's been working there, you know. And, you know, it's just like, whatever, yeah, if you're interested, just come by. How much is that? Yeah, if you're interested, just come by. I showed up the next day. And uh, I took a kickboxing class, and it sucked. But and Scott Adams was there, and, said, and I noticed he was a customer, and he said, hey, check out the jiu-jitsu. And I said, okay, and I came in, and it was a mission wrestling, and the first night I took my first guy out with an arm triangle choke. I didn't even know what it was, but I choked him. And that's what got me interested in the submission wrestling jiu-jitsu game. I've actually belted under um, the American Top Team system, and that belting is um, under Luigi Mandalma, Mandabi and uh, Glover Texera, Glover from the Pit Fight Team. Yeah, and um, I'm currently belted Ingi as a purple belt. Gotcha. And that's Ingi. How did Gia compete with brown and black belts? Right. Um, so, that for all uh, intents and purposes, I'm, I'm belted as a per- Gotcha. So, we, uh, you know, the on our website, we have a, a choke on there, and uh, it's called the Von Flew Choke. And <laughs> so, it's been very popular. It's actually one of my favorite uh, defenses against a guillotine when someone's holding on. So, what we want to know is, how does it feel to have a choke named after you, and who taught you that specific choke? Hmm. Uh, well, we'll start with um, who taught. Um, um, I was up at, um, in 2003, I was passing through Salt Lake City visiting family. Yeah. And I stopped through uh, Pedro Sawyer School. And he was kind enough to let this California kid come in there and um, borrow a gi and work into his class for a night. And he showed a guillotine defense from inside guillotine where you take the arm over the the one shoulder and lock it behind the other and you stack the guy and you could actually get a choke off with this. Yeah. And I'm a firm believer that whenever you travel or you go to a seminar or go to a school, if you could take one thing and, you know, and either use it or adapt it, then you've had a successful trip. You know, I mean, I don't believe in like, you know, you try to retain five things, you'll forget it. You take one piece of information from an hour of training, you've done good. Yeah. Um, so what I did was I played with it for a couple of months and I came up with this whole system from side mount and from half guard where you could actually 
adjust that choke and get into a safer position and finish with it. Huh. So the roots of it comes from Pedro. Cool. Yeah, so, if I wanted to pass through Salt Lake City and that and that specific class, I wanted to have landed that choke on Care Lexus and the other couple guys that I did it on out at WEC. Yeah. And we wouldn't have that choke. <laughs> So did you, yeah. what do you call the choke when you're teaching it? You don't call it the Von Flew choke when you're teaching it, do you? Um, no, not really. I always call it a shoulder choke. Um, the guys over at the, the, at, um, the Gracie School call it the Floozy. Oh, nice. Um, everybody else just calls it the Von Flew choke, and I guess the base name has been Von Flew, so, which is fine by me. I like my last name. Yeah, <laughs> Um, there's a couple questions about uh, when you did your stint on the UFC, and uh, one of our one of our uh, fans wanted to know uh, who you hated the most in the Tough House and why. Um, I really didn't hate anybody, to be honest. Uh, I, I I enjoyed being there. I mean, it was awesome being locked down, and just all I had to worry about was training. You know, yeah, training hard and winning. Um. I didn't mind it. Um, Matt was really hard to to train with and stuff, but I mean, without him being a hard ass, I wanted to learn certain things about mental barriers and walls. Right. You know, and climbing them and busting through them and surpassing them. Um, <clears throat> I got a kick out of everybody, and myself in that situation, I didn't see it as, oh, God, I'm stuck there for a month. Yeah, I thought, oh, God, I'm locked in the house where I get to pick on everybody for a month. <laughs> Because <laughs> they can't run. You know, so let's hug a producer in the pool. Let's cause a water balloon fight. Yeah. Let's do anything else we can to torment people, mainly the heavyweights, because they can't hit me. <laughs> 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 you know, I mean, so when it came to hating nothing, um, if there's any one person that I really just, you know, don't like, despised, is the one person that I never met, and that's, um, uh, what's his name? They got that got that didn't make way to on day one of the show. Right. Um, I forget his name. You know, and the main reason on that is simple fact that you know, dude, you cost me being there for day one. You know, I mean, if you weren't gonna make way, have the heart to do what you got to do. Why did you even try out? Yeah. You know, why did you waste my freaking time? Mm -hmm. I could have. You know how much better I would have been if I got there two weeks prior when I would have been there from day one with everybody? Yeah. I would have had a better chance of going further, of winning the show, of accomplishing my goals. Right. You know, not being bummed out because I was number 10 out of 1,500 people and some jackass gets on the show before me and he can't even make weight. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, so if there's one person that I had to say, it'd be him. You know, it's like, dude, you're just a total waste of time. Right. Well, I look at the UFC as being the top of the top. You know, um, if you're not winning fights, if you're not one of the best in the world, you know, in that top 20, you don't deserve to be in there. Um, and going in, you know, I understood that. And, you know, I went in and beat Kara Lexus, and I went in and um, I had a, a lost a decision to Luke Kumo. Yep. You know, and then, um, and then uh, a few months later, I fought Joe Riggs, for the life of me, he put me in a damn tri uh, triangle choke, leg triangle choke, and um, I went unconscious. <laughs> and I came back too, and I panicked because I didn't know where I was at. Yeah. But, um, you know, and I get caught. And, you know, I remember I was so frust flustered with myself and stuff, and it took me about 30 minutes to cool down in that back room after that fight. I mean, I was kicking stuff, I was hucking stuff, they had a camera panning on me. I could see the guys with the camera going, watch this, he's going to explode. So I'm flipping them off. I was mad, you know, really yeah. disappointed with myself. And I remember talking to Joe Silva afterwards saying, dude, you know, you know, maybe, I, you know, I, you know, I need to get on the open circuit and get a couple other fights in, you know, before I continue with this UFC path. Because, as I said, in my opinion, the, on top of the top belong there, and I wasn't performing like a top competitor. you got to be a winning fighter. Right. Consistently winning. And, yeah, so my perception of the UFC never changed one bit. I still 
have that same concept of it that you got to be the best to be in there. 